Hello everybody, Bubble Zest here, and this is Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video, we're going to be exploring Hearts of Iron 4's unused events, hidden portraits, easter eggs, and more for the fourth time. It has been a long, long time since I last did this, so this should be pretty interesting. Let's get started. Of course though, this video would not be complete if I didn't include the Papal State somewhere. So, here it is. For all two of you at this point who don't know how this works, the way you unlock the Papal State is via the Balance of Power. If, after you get Victor Emmanuel in charge, you let the Balance of Power shift too much to His Holiness, he will eventually take direct control of Italy. It even gets a tiny but unique focus tree. Pretty nice, actually. But let's be real, this is an easter egg in name only. I'm only bringing this up because I know someone would if I didn't. In a similar vein is Democratic Ethiopia. I know most people don't actually know about this, but I've already done a video on Democratic Ethiopia and Anha Selassie, which you should check out if you really want to know how this works. Instead, let's look at Switzerland. They actually have a pretty unique event actually, event BBA Switzerland.97. Austrian Navy veteran offers his services. That's interesting. We don't even have a coastline. This is an interesting little event. It's triggered sometime after Angelus with the Von Trapps escape in Austria. And yes, Von Trapps. This is a reference to the Sound of Music. And as someone who never actually had to sing so long farewell, the reference is almost lost on me. But you know what? The waves will be alive with the sound of our torpedoes. He's actually a pretty good Chief of Navy, actually. Convoy raid in efficiency plus 20%. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. The Soviet Union got a new focus tree in No Step Back well over a year ago. Now, what is there to say about the Soviet Union's focus tree? It's big, it's interesting, but there are so many things that are actually hidden about it. For instance, the Provisional Government. Normally the Provisional Government's trait is quite bad. It's like improve relations, gain plus 15%, negative political power. It's really, really bad. But it turns out... The Provisional Government has another trait that's been hidden under our noses for a whole year. So, how do we find it? Quite simple actually. All we have to do is set Ruling Party N, non-aligned. And here we go, Russia. And instead of the Provisional Government's normal trait, look at this. Three different traits have appeared. Emergé Connections, Desperate Gambit and Dysfunctional Assembly. I was really surprised when I discovered this, because, like, why is this here? Obviously, this is from a much earlier point of No Step Back's development, but I'm guessing it was just easier to leave it in than removing it. What's funny is that this is a much better trait, and should probably be their main trait. It's not that overpowered. Minus consumer goods, some extra core attack and defense. I mean, it's no more overpowered than Germany's one. I think it's pretty clear at this point that No Step Back had a very unusual development. There's so many different random things lying about unused, this being one of them. But this isn't the only one, actually. Let's just rush down to Coverse Operations. There we go. Now, normally, all this allows you to do is to frame an army officer or an admiral. But have you ever noticed what it actually says? Any army leader does not have the trait Monarchist Sympathizer, does not have the trait Stalinist. Wait, there's no way to get Monarchist Sympathizers, is there? In the game files, there is a way to get this trait. And I must give the credit to the person on Reddit who found this, because I didn't find it. Their screenshots are on screen now. As it turns out, all you have to do is remove like one or two lines of code, and it works normally. Which is quite funny, you can see like Zhukov with the trait Monarchist Sympathizer. Unlike the Provisional Government's other trait, I believe the reason this was removed was that Paradox didn't want to make it too easy for you to get other generals. And let's be fair, most of the Soviet generals, especially at this time, were anti-monarchists. Most of them had even fought in the Russian Civil War against the Whites. At the very least, the way we have it now with the traits cowed by Stalin, it's meant to be them being so desperate that they'll defect to you. Which I guess makes a tiny bit more sense. And while we're focusing on White Russia, I should also give special notice to Viktor Valakov, who has actually been in the game files since 2016 when Hoi 4 released. It's very weird why he was ever there at all, 
but it's even more interesting that he's still unused. You'd think with White Russia being in the game now, they would have found an opportunity to use him, but apparently not. Alright, that's enough of the White Exiles for now, let's look at Canada. You might be thinking, what does Canada have? Uh, let me tell you, Canada actually has one very, very unusual event. Event Canada Vanilla.1 Ronnie the Bren Gun Girl This event is triggered by Canada doing women in the workforce. It isn't that special, apart from the fact it's not a news event, it's a normal event. And also, this feels like an event someone like Kaiserreich should have, you know? This is law, this is information. Something about this being in Vanilla Hoi 4 is just funny to me, because it doesn't look like it should belong. It is interesting, I'll completely concede that, it's just... Why? Why of all things is this here? Unfortunately, no Canada Vanilla Dot 2, so this is the only one of its kind, which makes it even more special. While we're looking at two together for Victory Nations, let's look at two very, very rare factions. Starting off with Australia. Let's just rush down to a deal with Japan. Ah good, Japan approves our alliance. And it creates a faction, the Western Pacific Sphere. That is a very, very funny sight. Western Pacific Sphere with Japan in it. Surely Japan should be leading this alliance? But clearly not, Australia leads the way. But that isn't the only faction of its kind here, not even the only one in Oceania. Surprisingly enough, the other faction is actually in New Zealand's focus tree. So similarly, let's just rush down the focus tree and get a faction with Japan. What do they say? Very nice. We now have the Dioka Kyokin, which I know I'm not pronounced right at all, but... Whatever. If you didn't know, these are just the Japanese for Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. That's quite a mouthful as well, but at least I can pronounce it. So, why are these factions here? It's quite simple actually. These focus trees are from 2016, before the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere was added to the game. Before then, Japan just used to join the Axis. So with this, at least they had some way of getting a faction, I suppose. But you know, I always like these little details. These factions are so rare, I don't think many people even know they exist. But the fact that they went out of their way to make them is always pretty nice. But let's finish off this quartet by doing one more rare faction, this time with Japan. This is actually in the Democratic Tree, funnily enough, and it's the Old Alliance. If the UK somehow doesn't have a faction and is democratic, we'll get one. There we go. The Old Alliance has been formed, and that is actually its name. That is weird, just seeing the Old Alliance all over the place. I don't know why of all things that it's called this. You know what? Tell me what better names you can think of. I'm sure you can think of much better than this. Alright, time for an update. In part 2 of this series, I talked about Romania and Cornelio Codru's unused portraits. Well... I have good news, because as of now, if we set ruling party to F, here he is, he's in game. His portrait's pretty nice, it fits into Hoifo's art style pretty well, but believe it or not, this isn't the only thing that was added with his portrait, we have a new event, Depot Dishonor Romania.163, and he's gone. This is actually accurate as well, because Kodoru died in 1938 I believe, so this is meant to simulate his death. And gone. And here's Goga. His portrait's also kind of rare, but I do see him on historical every once in a while. So, I'm sure some people know of him. You know what? While we're in Romania, let's look at one other portrait. I'm sure some people are familiar with this, because he used to be in the game with another role. But his role has changed recently. So, let's hand with the king. Very nice. We're now democratic. We're not focusing on George here, we're actually focusing on non-aligned again. As you can see, it's no longer Carol II, it's Armand. So, let's set ruling party to N again. And here he is. At one point I think he was Romania's democratic leader, or something to that effect. But after Carol goes, 
he becomes the non-aligned leader. I like his smile. The man likes what he likes. We're back in Japan for this one. No Step Back added quite a lot of new tags to the game, especially in the Russian Far East. But even more, they added a lot of unique puppet names. And here's one I want to focus on. The puppet name for a non-aligned Vladivostok. The Transamur Protectorate. That's right, Transamur from Kaiserreich is now canon to Hearts of Iron 4. You'll see in this in vanilla, Hoi 4 is very, very funny. It doesn't make sense in some regards, but then I remember that this is Hearts of Iron 4, and then it all makes sense again. You know, despite everything, there are still some events I just don't understand the origins for, and why they're in the game. Like this one, event news.196. The Mongolia encourages revolutionaries. I think this is meant to say the Soviet Union. But still, I don't know any situation that causes this event to be used. And this is not an NSB event, it's a vanilla event. I'm sure someone will know where this comes from, but I couldn't find its origin. It's weird though, in my opinion, this would work perfectly with Trotsky's new focus tree. So maybe it should be tacked on there. Now, while our focus is on news events, let's go back to New Zealand. I think most people have heard of the Bob Temple tank and its associated event, News.270. But you would be forgiven for not knowing there's actually two events. The other event is News.271. Big Bob enters the scene. I mean, it's rare at the best of times for New Zealand to actually research the Bob Temple, so the Big Bob is just not very common at all. Now, I'm not sure on this, but from what I know, these events also only fire for New Zealand and Majors, so it's actually quite rare to see these events at all. But, they're still pretty neat. Okay, time for a brief excursion into the right opposition Soviet Union. There is something here, believe it or not, that I haven't actually talked about before. And no, it's not talking about a general as our leader. Let's just quickly finish the Civil War though. And that's it for Stalin. Now this is what I've been waiting for. In this game, what's happened is all right opposition leaders, including Bukharin, have died. What this allows us to do, though, is rename Stalingrad in Bukharin's honour. Now some of you might be thinking, Bubbles, you've shown this event before. And that's true, I have. But this is actually the even rarer version of this event. I know, it turns out this rare event has an even rarer version. You see it? Let me show you. Karlin is renamed to Rykovgrad. This version of the event only fires if you don't have Mikhail Karlin anymore. And as you can see, I didn't do gain support from party members, he's not here. So instead, we'll rename Karlin in Rykov's honour. Although I will note, Rykovgrad will actually happen if Rykov's alive. Bukharino will only happen if Bukharin is gone. One renamed city, two renamed cities. I'm sure many of you have heard of Trotskygrad, but how many of you have heard of Rykovgrad? Next up, the Kingdom of Lithuania. Believe it or not, there's actually evidence in the game files that Mungus III wasn't Paradox's first idea for the throne. Because in the files there is a portrait for Mungus II, Wuhan Kao. Mungus' father. Unlike most portraits we talked about in this series, I don't think this is an easter egg. I think this one was made by complete accident. Because Mungus II died in 1928. I think what happened is someone just made the portrait without checking whether or not he was alive. And then when someone actually did, they realised, we're going to have to make another one. Who knows, maybe if someone from Paradox can actually tell me whether or not that's true. Do let me know. But that's what I suspect. Funnily enough, this event is the only reference to Wilhelm Karl. But hey, at least he has some reference. We're going to be keeping to a monarchist theme for this one. We're playing as Poland right now, and we're about to get a Habsburg on our throne. Here he is, King Albert. What we're going to be focusing on is just how many traits this guy can get. He already starts with Patriot King. But he can get the Soldier King, the King of Galicia, but, while these traits are nice, 
There is one I think no one has noticed before. And it's not in the monarchist tree. It's all the way over here in the exiles tree. Prepare for the inevitable. As you can see, if we have Albrecht as our king, we get a unique trait. King of the Exiles. Division attack, defense, legitimacy, and unlimited manpower while exiled. Very nice. Now that is what I call a load of traits. This one is quite easy to explain why not too many people have noticed it. Any Polish player worth their salt can survive against Germany and wouldn't need this trait. But hey, this is another nice little trait. I have actually intended to do a King of the Exiles run on this channel. So if that's something you want me to do, do let me know and maybe in the future you'll be seeing King of the Exiles on this channel. The final thing we're going to be focusing on is something completely different. This is the 1939 start date. Most people don't play this, do they? Most people only do it for like the two achievements related to it and then never play it again. But surprisingly, the 1939 start date does have some little details that I don't think many people have noticed. So, let's look at Germany. And go into the production tab. And what do you know? It's the Graf Zeppelin. The Graf Zeppelin was meant to be Germany's first naval carrier, but it was cancelled due to the outbreak of the war. But funnily enough, in Hoi 4, it's right here, and you can finish it if you want. It's funny, isn't it? There's no reference really to the Graf Zeppelin anywhere in Hearts of Iron 4. But here, in the 1939 start date, it's here. Attention to detail is always something that I can give points for. Good job, Paradox. But okay, I think we'll be calling this here. This has been a pretty fun look at quite a lot of things. I haven't done this, like I said, for such a long time, so it was fun to do it all again. However, until next time, everybody, I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it, and until we meet again, from me, Bubble Zest, good bye.